Hi, my name's Paul Garrity, and um, I'm a bit of a fossil, actually. So as you can imagine, I've been through many changes in my time. In fact, that's why I'm busy drawing a fossil here. Um, I was born so long ago, in the last century, TV didn't exist yet where I was born. And I was born at the age of naught in a country called South Africa. And uh, I lived on the edge of a town called Peter Maritzburg, which was in a subtropical area. And what does that mean? It means it was hot and it was steamy. And every afternoon in late summer, ark, ark, boom, there would be violent thunderstorms. The rain would come pouring down so hard. If I didn't run for cover in 10 seconds, I'd be soaked from the top of my head to the tips of the toes of my socks. That's how hard it rained. And you know who that was good for? The wilderness and the animals. We were surrounded by the wilderness where we lived. We used to call it the bush in South Africa. And uh, without any TV, I used to observe the wilderness outside. And uh, when we went to school, it was a thing of great excitement for us to see films. So I've seen changes in our time. We have modern electric lanterns these days. You push a button and they come on. You don't even have to light them. You push a button again and they go off. You don't even have to blow them out. So I know about changes. I remember going to a huge school and uh, I came from a small school and it was a little bit terrifying to start with. And uh, so I've written a few stories about changes and mostly the ideas come from things that I see from where I lived or things that I saw from when I was a miniature person because we were surrounded by the wilderness. The trees grew prolifically and there was a river down the side of the garden. And I used to observe the frogs in the stream. And those are interesting creatures for change, starting off at the age of naught as tiny tadpoles. And uh, at night time, they used to sing us to sleep, or at least they used to sing me to sleep. Uh, certain other creatures used to keep me awake. So I'd lie in bed, the windows would be gaping, and the noises would be coming in through the window, and I'd hear, reach, reach, zig, 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 rrrt. No, 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 all sorts of noises coming in through the window. And most of them were okay, but some of them made my blood run cold. There was the sound of a monster that I used to hear just outside the window. It went, so guess what? I called it the Zuzu. And I was terrified. I used to say, Dad, I can't sleep. Why not? I'm scared of the Zuzu. What? I'm scared of the Zuzu. Don't be daft. Do you know what it is? It's a little cricket. You don't need to be scared of it. But it's making so much noise. No, it's only a cricket. Well, anyway, I wasn't frightened of the frogs, though, because I knew what they were. I used to see them in the stream. In the daytime, I used to go and play in the stream. I walked up to the water, and I'd hear, all the frogs diving for cover. They'd say, watch out. Here comes Paul Garrity. Hide. Spraying, spraying. And I saw them swimming away. I'd seen them earlier in the form of tadpoles. I'd watched them going through the changes. And uh, I knew a few of the frogs. There was one there called Sakpun Mushtak Johnson. And then there was Kela Shisa Makanda Johnson, the frog as well. And then there was another one called Habalapolo Labalala Lala Johnson. And then there was consequently an Habilapolo Flatin Johnson. They all had such strange names. I thought I could make up a silly story about um, all the different things that a frog could do the very versatile frog. And uh, at the same time, I thought I could make up a silly story that had a very long, silly name attached to it as well. So I did. I ended up writing a book called The Hopamelion, which is about one very confused frog. And um, I've brought a copy here to show you. Um, I don't seem to have one with me at the moment because it's been eaten by snakes. Ah, I found it. <laughs> And so this is the story, and it's about uh, all sorts of changes. Um, I'm not going to read it to you now, because uh, we only have a pair of minutes. But uh, it's a story about one very confused frog that doesn't know what it is. In fact, it didn't even realize it was supposed to have a name. And after meeting a succession of different creatures, it ends up deducing that it must be a baby Lizzie para turtle hopamelian, because it could see like a bush baby, cling with nopples on its fingers like a lizard, uh, scratch like a parrot, hop like a grasshopper, swim like a turtle, and hunt like a chameleon with a long sticky tongue. So it ended up saying, I'm a baby Lizzie parrot turtle hop chameleon, calling anyone like me. But it couldn't find anyone like itself. And uh, that's a bit like a person initially arriving at a larger school. You wander around like a terrified tadpole in a big pond, wondering who else there 
might be someone that you can become friends with. And these are the kind of things that we would look at while talking about changes. It's a bit like being a miniature tadpole, growing up, growing a pair of legs, growing some arms, uh, gradually losing the tail, uh, getting a deeper voice, getting a bigger mouth to go with it, and Shkoinks. popping up above the water, hopping out, and disappearing off into another world. And during the meanwhile, I think I might just sign this picture over here because I believe I'm going to be leaving it for these human beings here. And uh, I think after I've gone, they're going to be taking this picture, folding it up into a paper jet, setting fire to it, and throwing it across the hall. But just in case they want to keep it, I'll sign it. And in fact, I'll write the name of the book that it's from over here as well. Uh, just in case they might stick it up on the wall with that blue stuff that comes from a rhinoceros's nose. And with that, it's back to the studio. Thank you. <laughs>